Well that guys was an unmitigated disaster. I'm not entirely sure I've got anything whatsoever from this roll of film. So I may have just failed at the first hurdle. So I may have just failed at the first hurdle. I'm no expert on much of anything at all. But what I do know is that I made a right mess of that. Now photography has been my life really. I've never really wanted to do anything else. I just want to shoot pictures, just make pictures, just play with cameras, make pictures. I'm in a lucky position in that my job as a newspaper photographer allows me to... Jeez, get a bit, uh, bit ropey out there. My job as a newspaper photographer allows me to shoot pictures all day, every day virtually. And I just love it to bits, away from work. I just like to get out and shoot and any anything. Landscapes, street photography, sports, you name it. I'm out there photographing it, I love it. Now late, I've been really getting back into film photography for no particular reason other than I was brought up on film photography. I moved to digital in round about 2003 and then I shoot digital all day, every day at work. And I love it. Getting back to film, it's just, yeah, I don't know, it's a little bit of nostalgia. It's a little bit of bit of interest, bit quirky, bit bit different these days. Getting back to my roots, really. And I'm enjoying it. That's, that's the top and bottom of it. I'm enjoying it. Even though I shoot the photographs, I will process the black and white film myself. I send colour film away to be processed in a lab. Get the scans back, work on the images in Lightroom. So, uh, you know, I, I come out with a digital image at the end of the shift. But really, it's no different to uh, working on an image in a dark room, which I used to do, which I used to enjoy. These days, no time for that. No space for it, basically. England, along with France, invented photography. But virtually all the gear I use <laughs> is, uh, is Japanese. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. It's fantastic gear. But I just, you know, I got to thinking, is there a camera made in Britain? And I really, I honestly did not know. So I did a bit of Googling like you do and uh, came up with the Ensign Company. Or in this particular case, the Houghton Butcher Duo Ensign. And it is, oh, it is beautiful. I got it on a local auction site and I think I paid around about maybe $60 or something, which is, I don't know, 25 quid, or something like that, pounds. It looks to be in pretty good condition. This is the... Houghton Butcher Duo Ensign 2 and a quarter B. It says it was made round about the 1930s. I found some information that says this particular model was made between 2004 and 2010 in London, England. Whatever, it's, it's an early, early box camera. Fixed focus lens, obviously. Shutter has got instantaneous, which is take the photograph, a T mode, which gives you uh, a timed, timed exposure. From what I can gather, it's round, it's between a 30th and a 50th of a second shutter speeds. There's three apertures. I would imagine it's somewhere along the lines of F8, F16, F22, but just ballpark figures, no idea. I've never loaded one of these things before. So I've had a little bit of a play, and then I've got an old roll of Konica color film that I've had God knows how many years. And it, it, everything seems to be turning and working beautifully. On my Bronica, I get 15 frames per roll. On this bad boy, it gives me eight frames. So I've got eight frames to make something. I'm gonna head back to the van, load it up with a roll of Kodak HP5, I believe. We're gonna make eight cracking photographs. Let's get out and use this absolutely beautiful piece of British engineering. Now I'm no expert on much of anything at all, but what I do know is that I made a right mess of that. Jesus. Primarily due to the fact that there's no numbers coming up in the frame. So uh, I didn't have a clue how many shots I'd taken, whether I'd taken any shot, yeah, just no idea, not a clue. So as I'm down at the beach, I thought I'd just come down here and get a couple of photographs, burn off the film. See you mate, catch you later. Fingers crossed, I'll be in touch. See ya. That, that was a fellow I've just photographed actually. The, the first thing that struck me, there was an old Bedford truck just parked on the beach there. The yeah, owner was obviously out uh, having a bit of a surf with his kids. So I thought, right, take a sneaky shot like you do. Not the kids and the surfer freak, that's wrong. That is so wrong. No, of the, uh, of the truck, of the truck, obviously. Come on, think Paul. So anyway, so I've got a shot of this truck. And then I'm kind of advancing the film, 
Stop, stop, no stop. Enough. Did. Just tell them, just tell them what you did. What you did wrong. Fof. There's the right way to load the film and the wrong way. Obviously, I chose the wrong way. So I put the, <laughs> I put the film in upside down. And if you noticed earlier on, it was the back of the backing paper that was coming through. I never noticed. I really never, I've loaded a million rolls of 120. Never had an issue. Never had an issue whatsoever. This particular occasion, no idea. So the upshot is, when I actually worked it out, I, uh, I loaded a roll of Kodak T-Max 400 into the camera, successfully. Arrows came through, numbers came through, she's beautiful. So I put the camera in the bag, tripped the shutter. So that's, you know, eight frames. I've just burnt one on the inside of my bag. Brilliant. So uh, off to another bad start. So I decided to put a little bit of tape over the shutter just to make sure when it's in the bag it ain't going to trip off and that's it then i got on the push bike great bike ride beautiful day for it i think i took three photographs of uh, on, on that journey i could have taken more but i want to save a couple i want to try and get a couple of people photographs well we'll see how it goes that's it so uh, right we're back on target put it away moved on to other projects and completely forgot about finishing the box off so i dug it out today i'd shot frame number five which meant i need to wind on to frame number six i think i can't remember there was five showing in the window. Had I shot that or had I wound it on? I don't know. <laughs> so I sat, <laughs> I sat on the beach and took a couple of shots. And then I realised, shit, I haven't wound it on. So, oh, Christ, man, honestly. So, uh, got to frame number seven or frame number, yeah, frame number seven. And I managed to take a shot. <laughs> took another shot at number eight. So I know for sure, I know for guaranteed cast iron sure, I've taken two shots with this camera. There's only eight on the roll. Film's done, it's wound on. I'm gonna take the film out of the camera, develop the film in Ilford ID11, and hopefully, fingers crossed, hopefully, hopefully, we might get a couple of shots out of it. If, if listen, I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite excited, in a kind of nervous, expecting nothing apart from disappointment. I'm expecting nothing at all. Anything from this little black box is gonna be a bonus. Let's see what we get, guys. So begins another waste of time. Film developed, film fixed, wash time, finished. Fingers crossed, we've got something on this roll of film. Okay, can't actually see much. Oh, yep, yep, yep. We've got one shot there. We've got one, looks like two blanks. You can make that out, but we've got something on there. Looks like a landscape shot. We've got the next two frames by the looks of it blank completely blank we've got the next frame that's the mess up i made today that's the sort of double triple quadruple exposure that one looks quite nice actually there looks to be quite a lot of detail in that frame quite hopeful for that one the next one again that's probably the shot of the shot of the trip actually we've got the old fella just walking down the beach there quite a bit of detail there and then the last shot was a shot I took of the guy just mulching about on the uh, on the beach. And that looks okay as well. So we've definitely got one, two, three. We've got four shots out of a roll of eight and one double exposure. So, uh, yeah. Do you know something? <laughs> I'm quite excited about at least three of these frames. <laughs>